Alberta's energy grid is at risk. Wind and solar power are an important part of Alberta's current and future energy mix. Used in the right locations, it can meaningfully contribute to a portion of Alberta's electricity needs. And when installed by individual consumers, it can decrease the amount and cost of electricity a home or business needs to purchase from the power grid. And it can do all that without generating any CO2 emissions. But wind and solar power have limitations and challenges, especially when used in places that are not reliably sunny or windy and that regularly experience cold, dark days. Places like here in Alberta. As we all know, Alberta winters are no joke. They are cold, dark, and very unpredictable. It takes a lot of power to keep the lights on and homes and businesses warm during our winters. Our hot summers also require a lot of energy as the need for air conditioning soars. Alberta's power grid is what we all rely on to ensure we have all the electricity we need when we need it. Alberta's current power grid has the capacity to generate almost 20,000 megawatts of electricity if every facility is running at full output at the same time. That's a lot of power. However, it's highly unlikely that all 20,000 megawatts will ever be available at any given time. Generators might not be available because they are undergoing repairs or maintenance, or in the case of wind and solar, because low wind or sun conditions mean they can't produce at full output or even at all. The truth is, some types of generation produce electricity more reliably than others. For example, at almost 12,000 megawatts of installed capacity, natural gas is Alberta's reliable electricity workhorse. It's affordable and available on demand whenever it's needed and emits very little CO2. Around 25% of Alberta's power capacity is from wind and solar. But because wind and solar depend on the weather, they only provide about 10% of what Alberta needs for electricity. Now, we still want that wind and solar power when available, but here's the problem. On an average day in Alberta, we need about 10,000 megawatts of power on the grid to have the electricity we need to power our homes and businesses. On those average days, we use the wind and solar power that is available and make up the rest we need with clean Alberta natural gas, as well as smaller amounts of electricity from hydro and other sources. And the cost of all that electricity is charged on people's power bills. All is well. But when it gets really dark and cold in winter, or extremely hot in summer, Alberta needs more power than usual, well over 12,000 megawatts on the highest days and growing. And often when that happens, the wind isn't blowing and the sun isn't shining, leaving the entire power grid reliant on other forms of electricity, mostly natural gas to keep the lights on and furnaces operating. So, on these super cold and super hot days, Alberta ramps up those almost 12,000 megawatts of natural gas plants and other sources of power generation to full capacity. But in these extreme conditions, that still might not be enough. And if there isn't enough wind and solar to make up the difference, Alberta needs to find more power to avoid blackouts. That's when the Alberta electrical system operator, known as ASO, needs to rely on other jurisdictions like BC, Montana, or Saskatchewan to provide our extra electricity. But the energy may not be available from these other jurisdictions. On those high demand days, these other jurisdictions are often facing similar weather conditions and their own supply shortages. It might also be more lucrative for these non-Albertan power producers to sell their surplus power to the U.S. Either way, while imports from other places are an important source of backup supply for Alberta, they aren't guaranteed to be available. And if they don't sell Alberta what we need on a blizzardy day in January, Alberta would experience brownouts or even blackouts. And we all know how that would go in minus 30. And even if these jurisdictions can sell their power to us on these high demand days, the cost is usually extraordinary and charged directly onto the power bills of many Albertans. So what are the solutions? How about we just build more natural gas power plants? Well, that's a great idea. The problem is, Ottawa politicians want Alberta to have a net zero power grid by 2035, and they don't want more natural gas generation because it still emits some CO2. They are now threatening to punish, and even charge with a criminal offense, any power generator that doesn't comply with their carbon rules. And so, naturally, power generators are reluctant to build any new natural gas power plants. It's way too risky, to say the least. Okay then, so why not just build as many wind and solar farms as possible? Well, that's a problem too. 
First off, on a dark and windless day, it doesn't matter how many wind and solar farms we have, they still won't produce any power. Secondly, even if it was sunny and windy all the time, we would need to build hundreds of kilometers of solar farms on prime agricultural land and thousands of wind turbines placed in front of Alberta's world-class and often windy mountain viewscapes to generate the power needed to replace natural gas. And then, of course, there is also the cost to Albertans' power bills. You see, all of these solar and wind farms need to be integrated into the power grid, and the cost of doing so is charged to Albertans on their power bills under the transmission and distribution cost category. And if we can't rely on wind and solar to produce power reliably, that's a lot of extra cost to Albertans that they won't see any value from. So, in the end, what does this all mean for Albertans? It means Alberta needs to ensure that as our province and economy grow, we build more reliable and affordable power generation from natural gas, while incentivizing long-term investments in small modular reactors, carbon capture utilization and storage, hydrogen, geothermal, and other emerging technologies. That way we can ensure that our lights, furnaces, and air conditioners stay on no matter what the weather is like outside. And when we do build solar and wind farms, we need to do so in a sensible way that does not risk the reliability of our power grid, doesn't heap unnecessary new charges on Albertans' power bills, protects our best agricultural lands and precious natural landscapes, and ensures there is money set aside to clean everything up when they come to the end of their lifespan. Achieving a carbon neutral power grid in Alberta by 2050 is possible, but it will take careful planning, smart investment, and a bit of patience. That's why the Alberta government has paused new solar and wind farm approvals for six months to ensure we have a wind and solar regulatory regime that supports an Alberta power grid that is clean, reliable, and affordable. And we will work with investors, power producers, the federal government, and Alberta businesses and consumers to accomplish these goals. For more information on the six-month wind and solar pause and Alberta's electricity negotiations with Ottawa, please visit alberta.ca slash renewables pause.